and welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 197, and today's date is October 24th, 2013, and the title of this episode is The Economy is Now Showing Signs of the Collapse. And before we get started, I just wanted to welcome all those new people who are subscribing on YouTube, and if you haven't visited the x22report.com site or the x22report.com, the people which is a forum of like-minded people who are talking about the economic collapse. You can come down, you can join up, it's completely free. You can use a code name so no one knows your real name and uh, join up, it's completely free. And if you haven't visited the x22report.com site, uh, I have many different tabs up top uh, showing the uh, timeline of the collapse and that is the tab called Economic collapse and I also track some products uh, that is on the tab inflation deflation and I put Sentinel alerts up there uh, every single day and I comment on them and there are other things on the site other people's videos and things like that so if you haven't come come on down to x22report.com take a look at it I also on the right hand side put the potential false flags I try to keep track of what is going on and I continually update that but let's get into the economic collapse news and a couple months ago, and I believe this was in the summer when the Europe was out there and the French president was out there telling everyone that the economy is getting better, they're pulling out of the recession, things are fantastic, and guess what? It's all starting to fall apart. We saw that they, the French president said that the unemployment numbers are going to start going down. He sees great signs of improvement. And guess what? That was a technical glitch. And um, France released its August job seekers data in August, and it beat expectations back then. And French jobs data is totally screwed up because of this glitch that happened. And what has happened now is they reported a 50,000 drop last month and it was better than you know what they expected and it was because a company did not give the information and we are now seeing the unemployment in France rise 60,000 uh, unemployed people right now and this is increasing at this point and what we're seeing is they were at 3.23 million back in August and this has increased now to 3.29 million that are now unemployed so unemployment there is going up it was complete propaganda do you really think they just forgot about those numbers no it was all part of the same scheme that was going on in Europe and in the US because what they thought was that they had the Syrian event in the bag they thought they were going forward with this event we just convinced everyone that we're about to recover Europe is recovering the US is recovering and we will use this war and some type of cyber attack or another event to show now that the economy is collapsing because of then and we were right on the verge of recovering and that is completely falling apart and we can see now the truth is actually coming out now Citigroup is forecasting that Greek Greece Italy Portugal are gonna go from bad to worse and everyone was talking about this rebound in Europe and that you know Italy was getting better Portugal is getting better Greece is getting better you know they're not gonna need any more bailouts Cyprus had their bail-ins they're fine and a bailout and they're fine and uh, we don't have to worry about them but what we're seeing right now uh, Citigroup is out there saying that it Italy will bounce along in near permanent recession there is no economic growth or sovereign currency Portugal is in an, an even worse state. Unemployment rising again to 18.3% and beyond. Greece continues to be a catastrophe. Spain, unemployment will now rise above 27.9%. And Europe is facing a lost decade that is far worse than anything suffered by Japan and we can see that this entire 
scam of things that are getting better are now declining and what they are doing is they are preparing for something to explain why all this is happening and it will not be what everyone thinks they're just not going to let the countries collapse no what the central bankers the globalists the elite whatever you want to call them they will get out of this whole entire thing by starting a war and blaming it on the war so what else are we seeing? Well, the Eurozone debt levels soar again in second quarter. Official figures show that the debt level in the Eurozone has risen further in the second quarter of 2013, despite years of harsh austerity um, aimed at improving the economies. And we can see, as an example of Greece, they've had huge amounts of austerity cutting uh, uh, expenses, laying off people, and guess where that has got them? That has got them to coming up for a third bailout. There are so many people unemployed that the country is just imploding on itself. But again, the central bankers want this because this gives them the opportunity to come in and steal the natural resources of the countries that owe so much debt. And you know we're seeing this all over the place in Europe we're seeing it in the US and every single country is adding more and more debt and this is completely unsustainable at this time and a report that was uh, released the combined debt for the 17 mem member currency block hit 93.4 percent of gross domestic product so what does this tell us it tells us that things are not getting better. The propaganda during the summer was just that propaganda. Now, in the U.S., October uh, this month, the U.S. manufacturing output tumbles to 2009 levels. So that shows us that the manufacturing of the U.S. is completely declining at this time. Now, I know I mentioned real estate quite a bit, but here we go again. We have the propaganda of Europe in the summer telling us everything is fantastic. We have the propaganda in the United States and the president going around telling us that housing is making this huge rebound and everyone should be happy. Well, Bank of America now is eliminating another 1,300 mortgage jobs. Again, if the real estate industry was so great and every Americans out there uh, buying homes they would be getting mortgages and if they are buying mortgages guess what they would hire more people to handle the volume of people coming in purchasing the homes but guess what it's not people that are purchasing the homes so since the people aren't taking out mortgages they don't need people in the mortgage departments. So what do they do with them? They get rid of them. Because who are the people that are purchasing right now? Well, normal Americans, as we know, a lot of them foreclosed on their homes. And we know this because the Fed is still buying up all that toxic real estate from uh, the banks. So we know there's a lot of foreclosed inventory on the bank's books that they're not releasing. We understand there are huge amounts of short sales. And because of all, all of this, we also understand that Americans are unemployed or underemployed. And the unemployment numbers are completely manipulated to make it seem like America is working, but we are not. Now, since all these people are not working or underemployed or foreclosed and have short sales, guess what happens to their credit? Their credit is shot. If their credit is shot, how are they getting mortgages? Let's go down to the younger people here. If these people who are coming out of college can't find work because the unemployment for use is around 40 to 50 percent, they can't find work in their industry, pay is much lower, these people cannot buy homes. So who are these people buying the homes? Well, they are the investment companies. They are hedge funds. 
They are all of these people that are using cash to purchase these homes. And institutional investors accounted for 14% of all sales in September, up from 9% in August. All cash purchases nationwide represented 49% of all residential sales in September, up from a revised 40% in August, and up from 30% um, all, going all the way back to uh, September of 2012. So you can see what they were doing here. These investors were using cash, bypassing mortgages. And this is why we see the mortgage companies laying off because the everyday American cannot buy these homes. They were trying to pump up the market and guess what happened? Their plan failed. The housing market is declining. It is imploding on itself and these in institutional investors and hedge funds are trying to get out of the market at this time. And this goes on to say, the housing market continues to skew in favor of investors, particularly deep-pocketed institutional investors and other buyers paying with cash. And we're seeing, this is what we're seeing right now. Okay, now, the U.S. Uh, bank liquidity, liquidity plan um, is going forward right now, and what the Fed wants and they want the banks to do this um, as quickly as possible. They want the banks to hold enough assets they can easily sell to survive a credit crunch. They're calling on all U.S. banks to meet the new liquidity standards right now. The proposal which tells banks to hold enough liquid assets to meet their cash needs for 30 days if there is some type of um, uh, problem and regulators said that the liquidity liquidity rules will ensure that in a crunch banks would have enough government debt and other easy to sell assets on hand to cope with customer withdrawals post collateral and meet other needs now why would they be doing this at this point well we have to understand that the economy is declining and we understand that they are blaming this all on the government shutdown, which we know that's not true. The Fed was blaming the government shutdown as the reason why they weren't going to taper, but they decided to do this before the government shutdown. So we know this is all false and we know this all goes back that they were hoping that this event would occur where they could blame it on another country for the collapse of the economy. And this is what they were trying to do. So what, is, what else is happening right now? Well, yesterday I mentioned that billionaires are leaving the stock market. Um, it was Warren Buffett and George Soros. And in Market Watch today, uh, they're saying that large investors are taking some chips off the table. Uh, there is net selling taking place right now in the markets. This began a few weeks ago. They're selling major stocks like in Priceline, Facebook, LinkedIn, and other, uh, these are just a few of the companies. They are taking their money out of the market at this time. And Soschen is out there warning that uh, the Fed is not going to taper at this time. They might even increase, they might even increase QE next week or a couple weeks from now well this is going to be a tough case for them just to go ahead and say we got to increase QE because they were telling us how well everything's doing unemployment's coming down that we see because they're manipulating the numbers and all of a sudden they're gonna to have to increase QE well if they're going to inc increase QE they're gonna to have to have a really good reason and some other thing to blame it on and this is what I've been talking about all along. I do believe that we are going to see an event which will allow them to blame this on another country of why they need to increase QE because they understand, I mean, we have to think about it. Why do they want to increase QE? Well, they understand the housing market is imploding. They know it. They absolutely know it. I mean, if we, there was an article that Alan Greenspan knew that there was a housing bubble. They're just admitting it now. 
they never tell you what's really going on. They always tell you the opposite. But we know the housing market is coming down. We know the economy is declining. We know that this debt that we have is unsustainable. The debt in Europe, unsustainable. This is why the countries, the unemployment, um, the outlook of every single co uh, country there is worse than they expected because they are using propaganda back in the summer to convince every everyone that things were getting better. But now we see that they're going to need to increase the creation of money. Why? Because if the housing market is declining, that means there's more foreclosures. More foreclosures, they have a lot more to buy from the banks to take them off their books. And what else will happen now? Well, other foreign nations will see what is happening and that the economy is declining, and most of them will start to think like, hmm, should we hold on to these treasury bonds? Well, probably not. So they will start turning them in and sending them back to the U.S., and if there's a seller, there has to be a buyer, so the Fed will have to start purchasing these treasury bonds. We also see Saudi Arabia looking to move away from the US at this point. Why? Because most of their oil sales are now to China and a very little bit are to the US. And they're thinking to themselves, where do they want to be? Because if the US collapses and they're holding all these dollars and they're hooked to the dollar to sell their oil, they're going to be in very big trouble. So now they're thinking, hmm, maybe we need to strike a deal with China and, and move away and just protect ourselves just in case, not just in case, but we know this is going to happen, that this will, when this happens, we have another place to go. Okay. Now, a federal judge, and I mentioned this in my other reports, is looking into Obamacare and his green lights, the lawsuit that could stop Obamacare. Uh, small business plaintiffs say the government is treating all 50 states the same even though Congress allowed them to opt out and 36 states did opt out of Obamacare and a federal judge denied the government's motion to dismiss the case on Tuesday. The Affordable Care Act forbids the federal government from enforcing the law in any state that opted out of setting up if it's setting up its own health care exchange, according to a group of small businesses whose lawsuit got a key hearing Monday in federal court. The Obama administration, according to their lawsuit, has ignored that language in the law enforcing all of its provisions, even in the states that opted out of the program. So we're going to see how this plays out, and hopefully they can remove Obamacare and get rid of this monstrosity, especially since their entire system is not working at all. And we know what Obamacare is. It is a cash grab to, to create tax revenue for the government. And it is also to benefit the health insurance um, industry by upping all the premiums for everyone and making it mandatory for everyone to get health insurance. Boy, would I like a business like that where you uh, make everyone do something uh, and you're able to set the prices for whatever you want. Um, if we all could do that, we'd all be very, very wealthy. Okay, now, right now, 50 senators warn Obama they will not ratify the UN Arms Treaty. 50 senators are standing together to protect the right to keep and bear arms as guaranteed by the Second Amendment, which they should do. It is the Constitution. It is the right of every person to bear arms. In a letter addressed to President Barack Obama, the senators enumerated six reasons the president should refuse to present the United Arms Treaty, uh, Trade Treaty to the Senate for ratification. Among the exceptions, and here are some of them, the whole treaty is ambiguous. It's not clear. It also grants uh, foreign sources authority, and it grants them the power to impose judgment or control on the U.S. Well, Senator John Cornyn, from Texas, he warned of the potential threat to core principles of liberty posed by the UN gun grab. A treaty is an international obligation that trumps the domestic laws of the country. So that's the real threat here. It is obviously the Constitution um, is the fundamental law of America and of our land. But if so, for some reason this treaty should be signed and then ratified by 67 senators, then it trumps American law. 
this is kind of wrong because the treaty violates the Constitution and any law that violates the Constitution cannot become law of the land. So this law completely goes against the Second Amendment. Even though the Obama administration is trying to say it doesn't, it does. Now, how are they trying to get the gun bill from Dianne Feinstein and the UN Arms Treaty passed? Well, we're seeing a lot of mass shootings. Eric Holder is out there saying that mass shootings are up 300% and we got to do something. And we're seeing that in um, a student was arrested in Washington in a uh, uh, Frontier Middle School, which was uh, adjacent to Pioneer Elementary School. They were both locked down for two hours because the 11-year-old came in with 400 rounds of ammunition, guns, knives to the school, and he was going to do something, but they stopped him beforehand. And also today, we saw another shooting at a Millington, uh, at Millington Naval Base, which is in Tennessee. And it seems like U.S. Navy confirms that two people were injured when a shooter opened fire near the base uh, this afternoon. And we can see what is happening here. Just in this short period of time, look at all these mass shootings that we're seeing all of a sudden. And this is why Holder is out there telling us, making up things, that 300% increase in mass shootings. We need to um, look at the gun laws again. We need to get these passed. And they're going to ramp this up and eventually have the really horrific um, event to try to get these gun bills through and this is their plan and we are getting closer and closer to the end game because you can see how they're approaching this. Now if we look at it from a different perspective and we go out to the Pacific and we see what uh, is going on there we see that the Philippines are now creating their own Air Force and they haven't operated jet fighters for nearly a decade and now they're looking to set up and um, fly planes again and the Philippines may have never bought fighter planes again were it not for China. Since 2009 the two countries, one thought to be a friendly trajectory, have verbally sparred over competing territorial claims in the South China Sea. Now the Philippines now are now again purchasing aircrafts and getting ready for we know what is coming, which is World War III with China. So what is Japan doing at this point? Japan is going to deploy a service to ship missile unit at uh, Mayako Island in the country's southernmost um, Okinawa uh, prefecture for the first time next month and this will protect them in the region from China and we can see that they're also um, making moves to protect themselves for what is coming and we also understand that the US is encircling China with different bases and Japan has um, created the first um, uh, warships since World War II. They're tra trying to change their um, constitution of Article 9 to become, a, instead of a pacifist nation, uh, the ability to attack on their own. And the U.S. now is going to deploy stealth destroyers in the Pacific. The U.S. Navy will inaugurate the DDG-1000, a next-generation self-destroyer which is undetected on radar screens. This destroyer will be deployed in the Pacific area. And the battleships are also being deployed in this area. And why are they being deployed? Um, it's their role is to keep at bay China, which seeks to become a military super power and this new uh, ship this new destroyer that they're creating that is stealth um, is state-of-the-art automated system and the ship now only needs hundred and fifty members to run it and that's about half of what they normally need on a ship so we can see what is happening at this point 
Now, a couple of reports ago, I reported that Turkey was taking the deal with China to supply uh, the missiles, even though Turkey is a NATO country, and um, Washington is very upset about this, and they're making kind of a stink, and they are very concerned, and this goes on to say that we are very concerned about the perspective deal with the sanctioned Chinese firm. Yes, this is a commercial decision. It is Turkey's sovereign right, but we are concerned about what it means for allied air defense and because Turkey is in a strategic location they are very worried about how this is going to work out because they understand that they are preparing for World War III and they understand they need Turkey on uh, their side and Turkey has now turned to China to supply them with missiles and we also have to remember China has been making deals all over the globe um, to push their currency and to make it the reserve currency of the world. They've been making deals in Europe. They've been making deals in Africa. They've been making deals in Australia. They've been making deals in Brazil. And we can see what is happening here. The United States has military forces um, all throughout the Middle East. And we hear these drone strikes happening all the time. And what we're seeing right now, um, the CIA has a secret pact with Pakistan, and Pakistani government allows them to do these drone strikes because we understand that the government there is a puppet regime that works for the U.S. And what they're actually doing with these drone strikes are keeping the people pushed back because they do not want them to... Um, rise up and overthrow the government because if they do what will that what will end up happening is they will push the central bankers out and the US dollar will no longer be the reserve cu currency in these countries and this is the reason for the drone strikes the only reason we saw this happen in Iran back in the 70s where the central bankers were pushed out and that country no longer and Syria no longer sell their oil using the US dollar and the US is using this um, tactic to keep all these countries controlled so they can continually keep the US dollar propped up. Now what has happened in Syria is like a worst case scenario for what was what, what they were trying to do. The rebel paid mercenary forces have been pushed back. Assad is winning. The U.S. is really not supporting them anymore. They're being pushed back. And right now, they're, um, the U.S. strategy in Syria has gone completely from good to worse. And Assad and his allies are pushing forward. So their plan is still to get Assad to get a puppet government in Syria to get a puppet government in Iran like they're doing to all these other countries and they're going to have to do something soon and this is why in my other uh, reports about um, false flag events coming things like that because they are becoming desperate now they are making their move they are planning something right now and this is why you see all the propaganda about terrorism about al-Qaeda, about al-Shabaab. This is why we're seeing all this. This is why we're seeing the propaganda about nuclear weapons that are being transferred, why um, officers who are, who are char in charge of the nuclear arsenal being relieved of their command. And we can see what is happening right now. They are making and planning and putting everything um, into what they need to do to get this war started. They will not give up. If you think it's over, it is not. Okay. Now, we understand that they've been filling us with the propaganda of cyber attacks hitting the power grid and whatnot. There was a cyber attack, and they believe it's from Russia, and again, I'll go through this again. You can only see the last country that the attack came from where the server was located. Professional hackers who do attacks 
do not sit there in their home on their server and their attack comes from their server. They bounce it off many different servers and you can really only see the last place it came. So on this instance, they're saying they're a, a cyber attack was based in Russia and has forced a shutdown of the Clay Center public utilities computer system. And this is according to Bill Calloway, um, who heads up uh, the public utilities in this area. And the Clay Center's computer was one of the number of all was one of a number of all over the world involving a virus demanding a ransom payment under threat of destroying data files on the computer. So this virus got in there. It, it, they were threatening that they were going to destroy everything unless they paid up. And IT experts say the city's computers will have to be completely erased and data from backup systems used to restore the system. And the process will take several days. And the computer system uh, operating the city power plant was not affected at this time. And Callaway saying that the national grid is really vulnerable to attack. And he said that um, power companies, particularly large companies, are reluctant to talk about the cyber vulnerability for fear of frightening customers and investors. But he said um, not discussing the issue openly makes things a lot worse. And he says the big companies are constantly being attacked, but they don't want to talk about it. But that makes everybody vulnerable. And we can see what is happening. The the um, propaganda of the pro power grid going down has grown. We can see that they're starting to test and attack different areas and to see how it works. And I believe if we go back to 2003, that whole East Coast power outage that we saw was completely done as a test to see if they were able to bring down a grid and they were able to do it. And I believe what is happening right now is we, we've been seeing many, many glitches in the NASDAQ and the internet, um, on Amazon, Netflix, all the major companies. And we're seeing that things are starting to happen at this time. And of course, Janet Napolitano, who is leaving office, just ha so happened to mention that when a cyber attack hits, um, it will hit the power grid, the financial institutions, and it will be devastating. And we know that they are getting ready to do something. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks.